Previously on Anything Goes. Okay. Because uh, I had a very rough childhood and I was bullied ruthlessly and sure. viciously. And uh, I, my heart breaks for these kids. And yep. uh, that being said, this is always when the person always says, now what, I'm gonna re- what I really mean is, <laughs> I, I, I think that um, you, you can't eliminate uh, all bullying. Right. Sure. I think that there is a certain amount of bullying that, it goes, that will always go on in childhood. And that we should leave that alone. I think that when bullying goes past a certain, when it goes past a certain, uh, I don't know, a wall of some sort, when it becomes like really violent or whatever, uh, then it should be stopped. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the cyber bullying, although I can't imagine that it's worse than actual bullying. No, I can't either. In fact, I think it's nonsense to say, but yeah, but you weren't cyber bullied. I'm like, yeah, we had it worse. <laughs> they did it to my face with boots. And yeah. I did so not try t- not to cry yeah, in front like, of these like, people. Don't tell me that a message is, is worse than a boot to the head. Or a bucket of piss poured through your window when you're in camp. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just don't buy that. I, so I, I think that part of the problem is, it, I think, I, I hate seeing gay men constantly s- looked upon as victims. That's what really gets to me. As if it will never change that we're the eternal victim, that the, we are the world's whipping boy. And there's a lot of truth to that. Because you kind of want to be whipped. I think that, well, I mean, that's different. What I do in bed is different. Yeah. And of course I've eroticized my childhood. <laughs> I mean, I, I, honestly, I mean, go see, I mean, I know what Freud is. I, he's right. Yeah. Uh, naturally. <laughs> naturally, I want to fuck the boys that brutalize me when I was young. Sure. And I know, I'm just being honest, that's the truth. Yep. So, of course, I have a lot of hazing video porn. Yes. <laughs> yes, those things are all true. Well, but that being said, I, I also think that, you know, you know, I think... Did you did you say grow a pair? Did you actually say I, that? Yes, I did. Okay. But that's part of a long, long interview. Right. They took that out to make me look like, like an uncaring... Hardened, but kid- old fag who's like, well, I had it rough, so you kids right. can take a <laughs> right. boot to their head. And that's not my point. My point is, I think that this generation of child of children <laughs> yeah. are too coddled, yes. right? And right. that we have, we are raising a generation of indigo children, orchids. Yes. These- and now let's get to a new exciting show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for some laughs? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Don't clean that up. It adds character. This is Anything Goes with Darren Frost. How the fuck am I funny? Dave Martin. What have we got here? A fucking comedian. And Kathleen McGee. And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you. Can you? Oh my god, it finally worked. There we go. That was so annoying. There we go. I bought I bought this like new Wi-Fi booster for like $80 and it's not even it's making it worse. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> you can send it back to Amazon and send it right to Jeff Bezos. Oh, yeah. He can fucking put it in his mansion or something. I don't know. See, am I am I not doing it's 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 Can you lagging. Hear me at all? It's a little bit, but it's lagging a lot. You're oh, a, yes. you're a little choppy. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Um. Well, if it's like this, we don't have to do it today. We can just skip it because I predominantly wanted to talk about you getting engaged, and if you're choppy, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find out what the fuck is going on in this goddamn house. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's really frust- I'm really frustrated with it right now. What's like, okay, I tried now? Internet, it didn't work. It's wor- it seems to be. Oh. It seems to be better working now. Okay. Let's see that. Well, let's just try it and see what happens. Okay. I'm all for that. Can you? He- I can hear you. Okay. You can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So big, big news in your in your world is you're doing the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. I am. <laughs> Yes, finally. Yes, you're doing it again. How did that happen?
Oh, here we go. Wow, maybe it's. Yeah, yeah it's not working. No. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's not do this today. Let's try to figure something out because th this is too choppy, Dave. It's not going to be good. Listen up out there. This is Graham Kay, and you're listening to Darren Frost and Dave Martin on Anything Goes on Canada Laughs. Hooray for fun. <laughs> Thank you. We can just talk right away about you getting engaged. Let's jump into I that. Engaged. Got engaged. And you it's said that you, were, you guys had dated for four years. Yeah, and you weren't sure how he was going to do it, but you knew it was probably coming. Yeah, yeah. If you're with somebody for four years and you're almost 40 years old, it better be fucking coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Otherwise, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it was, it. yeah, he, he got me a ring from Costco, which is what I wanted. And it's a beautiful, sparkly ring. Like, it's very sparkly. Right. But he picked me up from work and, like, literally I was, I was wearing my taco shirt and... I had got him fish tacos and I was like, let's go home and eat these tacos. And then he said, well, I want to show you something at the legislature. I'm like, what do you want to show me at the legislature? <laughs> I'm, like, oh. I'm like, okay, but I'm, I want these tacos. He's like, it won't be long. We'll just go look at this thing and then we'll go home. So we get to the legislature and I, and I'm, and then he parks and I'm like, oh, we're getting out. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I just got it. It's over here. And then he gets out of the car and he had a pit stain from his pit to his waist. Hot. Like, Yes. Yeah, and it wasn't even warm out. Like, it was warm, but it wasn't, like, sweat warm. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, what's going on? Are you okay? And then we're walking. There's, like, this big concrete courtyard that is kind of above where the legislature grounds are. So we're walking on that, and he looks at me, and he goes, okay, so I'm going to ask you to marry me, but I know you didn't want me to do it in front of a bunch of strange people, so where do you want me to do it? <laughs> and I was like, what? What? But then I was like, well, not on the concrete. You'll hurt your knee. So I took him over to some grass. Nice. And then, and then he got down on one knee and he asked me to marry him. And then he said, any man that has not asked you this already is a fucking idiot. So Dave, he called you a fucking idiot. Because he knew that you're not. <laughs> Go down. You're so quick to change. You're so quick to change the amount of time that we actually went out. Where from a oh, like a month. Two months to uh, two months. four months or whatever it was. I don't even know how long we were dating for. Right. I mean, but what was I supposed to ask you after two months? No, I'm I'm just saying my, uh, that Adam okay. called you a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and what's well, my, let's my favorite. First before it, it's not going to bother me until I actually meet the person or actually get a confirmation that he said that. But right. <laughs> it could be just you making stuff up. Just no, I didn't make this one up. Just an excuse to call me an idiot, which I... I don't need to make anything up to just call you an idiot. Right. But, you know, <laughs> it's nice that you can justify it by saying it was someone else doing it. Now, what now, if, if you got, if it was more than, like, four years of going out, I mean, would you ever hit a certain point where you're like, what's the point in getting married? Or, or it's like, I just know... Well, I just... I know sometimes people will go out for too long... And yeah. then they'll hit like seven or eight years of just going out, and then they'll be like, "Well, why, why, why get married now?" Or yeah, you're why? just getting married for the man to get a piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, but I, I'm a girl that's always wanted to have a wedding. Like I've, I've always wanted to get married. So that was the thing. Like it's not. I mean, I don't need to get married. I, I'm fine just like being without him forever. Like it is just a piece of paper. But I also, I'm, I want to get pretty dresses and right. And have a party, so yeah. yeah so, party, right. You know, yeah. when, when I got married, like I didn't want a big wedding. I wanted to go to Vegas and just kind of do that thing. But you know, my wife was great. We all know her; she's great. Everyone tells me how great she is. The only thing she ever asked for was a wedding. And yeah. the whole time, twenty years we've been together, she wanted to get a, a wedding in a church. We all know how I'm kind of anti-church. <laughs> yeah. And you know, have it in Sudbury. And you know, twenty years later, I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad that I did make a big spectacle of it. I mean, we didn't go all out. We didn't spend that much money, but we did spend more than my idea. And I'm glad we did because it was an important day for her. 
And so mm-hmm. I totally understand when you say that, that that's what you want and it is important. It's not just a piece of paper. It's more than that for you. So I think you yeah. should have it and that's great. Yeah, I'm excited. And I literally was just on a Zoom call because I'm talking to wedding planners because everything that I'm reading is saying, you know, get a wedding planner either to plan the whole wedding, to do a partial planning, or to just be the day of coordinator so that they come and they run the whole thing, which is right. what I want to do. So, yeah. So, it's it's fun. Like, I get to, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so excited and, like, I have, like, really good ideas and, uh, I think it's going to be a coveted invitation. It's hard though. Cause I only can bring, I can only have 180 people and Adam's family alone is like 90. Right. So I've got to where, like invite. Where's Adam from what? originally? Is he from Vancouver? He's, he's from Langley, BC and we're getting married in Fort Langley, which is like oh, next okay. to yeah, Langley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're getting married in Fort Langley. It looks like a little movie set town. Lots of those movie of the weeks are actually filmed at the venue that we're getting married at. Mm-hmm. Like almost every wedding in one of those things is filmed <laughs> at that place. You have you haven't checked if you're you, to make sure that you're not getting married over a, like an ancient Indian burial ground or anything. <laughs> I don't think so. I, could be. Who knows? But the fort is uh, is far, but it's not next to the. We're just getting married at this like little place in Fort Langley, not in the fort. So I don't know. <laughs> well, I think I think four years is a long, a good amount of time to see the kind of ups and downs of our business, to see if, you know, because it's not easy yeah. marrying a comic or dating a comic. No. But I think I think four years is a good amount of time, and, and that's good. Good for you. And well, it's also, good to be... He's, also, I think, too, a, it's, if you hit the... If you go over, if... Yeah, I think if you kind of stay going out for too long, right, yeah, you'll hit that point of, like, why are we even bothering? But then it's sort of like... But also, I think if you... After the four-year mark, if you get married, you're probably going to... Uh, you know, you'll have that sort of bond that you'll probably be able to get over a lot of problems that you would have, that you might have later on. And you'll be like, come on, we're married. We have to get over this. Rather than just getting out being like, hey, man, we're not even married. What the fuck are we doing this for? So, I mean, if you are married and you do want to stay together, I mean, I think that it'll, it'll help you get through a lot of shit that you might normally just bail out of the situation on. Or I'm just yeah. projecting my insecurities on <laughs> both of you. What could it possibly well, it, be? Marriage is expensive. Like just the wedding alone, just like thinking about everything, and like I have, I'm going to get a, I'm going to have to get a, another job to pay for all of this. Like I'm going to have to get a retail job or another yeah. serving job or I don't know. I just got extensions and I might start doing learning how to do that. I don't know, but uh, yeah, just and I'm like why wouldn't I get another job when I wanted to just buy a house or pay off my bills, but now I'm willing to get another job just so I can have two wedding dresses. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. But why, would, whatever. Why, why are you having two wedding dresses? Because I'm Kathleen McGee and I want two wedding dresses. Oh, okay. There we go, Dave. I'll oh, have a I'm, ceremony I'm, dress and I'll have a, a party dress. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah well, that's, I mean, that's, I, that's common. That's not, yeah. that, that's not that far-fetched. I don't disagree yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Now, where's the like honeymoon? Really, I don't know yet. Like we haven't even thought that far because it's so hard with COVID too. Because you really don't know right. anything. But we booked our venue for September fourth, so next year. So, right. and uh, everyone I talked to said that's probably enough time. They, you know, that it should hopefully be over by then, and we should be able to still. Well, but I don't I'm know. Sure, I'm sure you could probably book the Abbotsford Yuck Yucks and stay. I know, right? <laughs> I could stay in Abbotsford for my honeymoon. Sure. Yeah, that's what every girl dreams of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a quick car drive down the highway. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> no, I want to go somewhere. I don't rent know where. A con- rent a convertible, drive through town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what, so exactly. Now, now, if, if he's inviting 90 people... And, and so you have 90 to choose from yourself. Yeah. So how big is your family? My family's about 48. Right. But there's also, but also a lot of it is kids. And so I am inviting kids to the wedding, but instead of having them in the reception area, there's a room in the building that we're just going to set up for kids. We're going to have movies and pizza chicken, and stuff. Chicken so that, nuggets and pokers. Yeah. So that yeah. they leave us alone for the reception and I can, and I can invite more adults. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, some parents are going to just not bring their kids because they don't want to have to worry about leaving early. Because that's the problem with kids is, like, they always want to leave early. And this is going to be a good wedding. People are going to want to stay for this wedding. Well, also, not just that, but they can use their kids as an excuse that they have to leave. 
Right. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. But no one's gonna want to leave this wedding, honestly, Darren. I get it. Like, I get it. Yeah. This wedding, I'm, like, I already have like these ridiculous ideas. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but I have a really great idea for entertainment and stuff, and like, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, kids, exactly. kids and diarrhea are always a great reason to get out. Of a party <laughs> like, hey, exactly. my kids, yeah. I got diarrhea. Sorry, right, gotta go. And and if nobody should... has diarrhea, double whammy. Yeah. Exactly. Well, nobody should want you to stay too if you've just admitted to having diarrhea. Either. Yeah. It's like, oh no, the best part. We're just about to bring out the cake, and we're gonna play Twister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're gonna play Twister. <laughs> what? Uh, That's okay. Now, are you going to have, like, a stag and doe party, or are you going to have, like... Um... Well, I'm definitely going to do, like, like I'll have bachelorette and bachelor party, but I'm definitely going to do... Because in, in... I don't know if they do it in Ontario, but in Manitoba... Yeah, they do it in Ontario. Uh, they have the... It's like a fundraiser for the wedding. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, they don't do that out here, but I'm going to do it. Because... Oh, it, you should do I, a weekend is, of comedy, Kathleen. Ask some friends should, to come out and yeah. take charge, and you could probably clear... A good amount of money for your wedding. Like I should like yeah I should have a mini like comedy festival fundraiser. Wedding. I would uh, I would I would come out on on zero on my own dime to do that. Are you that. serious? That would I be would. fun. I would. I and, would, I would and I would come out to on Darren's dime. So if yeah. Darren wants to <laughs> some money, I would I would, I would do easy. that. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, fun. I, yeah. I can make my I, think uh, I can make my out. way out there. I could I'll figure something out. I mean, if, I'm gonna have to make that happen if, if there's an invite out there for me, but I, I'm not. Uh, we'll see. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but Swoop and Flair fly pretty cheap. Yes. Now the problem is, is like all these venues are closing, so you don't even know where you could even possibly do that show. Like all, I don't know what it's like out there in Ontario. So many music venues are closing. Yeah. Up. It's getting a little bit scary. Like I'm going to do shows at the Capitol Music Club in Saskatoon on September 12th. Right. And uh, they're such a great venue, but they've really been struggling. Yeah. And um, as far as I know, Grindstone is still doing okay. Like they're doing a little, they're doing a mini festival this weekend. Like they're calling it Reset. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of just. I saw that. Yeah. Um, so there are like. It's, it's not as dire out in Alberta as it is in Ontario because we've been open since May. Right. right. So I so yesterday I had to drive to Toronto for the first time in five months to wow. do something, right? And I was driving across Bloor west of Dufferin but coming towards Dufferin. And I couldn't believe how many stores are closed, boarded up, and empty. It's It was a shock to me. Because, uh, you know, you can be told until you actually see it. It's like until you go to, to Vancouver, till you go to Hastings, and you see with your own eyes, nobody yeah. can ever describe that area of Vancouver without seeing it to, to give it justice. And I was yeah. shocked at even Toronto how bad it is. So I, I'm, I'm really worried about venues yeah. for comedy and music. I mean, I'm okay. I, I'm doing my cartoons and stuff, but I'm worried for the ability to perform, period. Darryl, oh, I agree with you. <laughs> Darren's starting to turn into that joke about vegans. Like, uh, has Darren told you that he does cartoon voices? No. Yes. He yes. will. He will. Yes. He, will. <laughs> he does he cartoon will. voices in CrossFit. Yeah. And roller derby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just no. waiting for him to bake his own bread. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you so ornery today, David? Yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't oh, know. So did you have a... My, Somebody my dress, got engaged my, or something. I don't know. What's going on, Dave? Oh, uh, nothing. My uh, actually, no. I'm a, I'm in an all, all right place. I did a, a weekend last week with uh, Arthur Simeon at the Absolute, and I'm there tonight. So, um, yeah, I had my first uh, experience with a in front of a, a sheet of plexiglass doing a show. So that was uh, interesting. But uh, yeah, you have to be I, behind plexiglass there. Yeah. 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 What? And then yeah. it was well, the same thing in Ottawa, too, I guess, as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. It must be in like Ottawa, in Ontario. Yeah, yeah, in Ottawa, yucks is a total plexiglass. I've been fighting 30 years to be safe on stage. I finally got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised that more comics don't have their own mics yet. Like, I thought that that was going to be the thing. We are all going to have to bring our own mic. And I think it might still become something. But every time I've done a show, it's either been, like, someone wipes the mic off the MC wipes the mic off or they're usually it's like the headliner has their own mic that no one else touches and like the MC and middle share or right. they each get their own microphone. It's, yeah. I remember it's the not one, the like, same. comics would make fun of each other for bringing their own mics, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> now well, they're ahead of the game. I think there was like a one comic in particular that had like a sol like a solid gold microphone that he insisted on using. So I don't know if that was a part of his act or or what. Oh, I looked him up, and you can get some really cool looking microphones. Like I would get a sparkly one for sure. <laughs> Well, it's like, yeah, it's like sure. Dave, that, that 8 by 10 you have of with that old 1950s microphone that everyone uses in stand-up comedy uh, pictures, but nobody ever does actually use them on stage. You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, about. yeah, the, the, old cro the old crooning microphone. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, the, what the fuck was that? Me and Michael Buble. I don't yeah. know, if, you know, it, it looks cool, but then at the same no, time... No, no, like, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not for stand-up. <laughs> Fucking it serenade cool the front now. front row, or would I do it now? Dave, no, but Dave and Desri, those are the two comics that I know had that microphone oh, picture. Fuck. Oh fuck! I know you used the, it on stage. It was just a the, photo shoot thing. But the yeah. crooners of comedy, the crooners yes. of comedy. Yes. <laughs> you can have that, Dave. You can use that when things get back to back to normal. Oh, With that, yeah. the, the, comedy. that microphone. Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah. I don't have, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 bust it out. I love going to old comedy clubs and seeing like their very old headshots. Like, remember a time to laugh had all the old ones and all the comics had a prop, like they'd be holding a rubber chicken. Or oh, hilarious! <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they were all shot by the same guy, and I just I yes. think that everyone was sort of like, "Oh, these these photos aren't going to go anywhere, so I'll just be goofy with them if I have to." But yeah, and then it was, someone had one where they're uh, they're changing like the battery, the car battery or something like that. Have you ever seen that one? Oh, that's Jim McNally. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's touching. He's got the one on the battery and the one on his mouth. But he's an actual mechanic. I mean, that was his whole angle of his show. He talked about cars right, and stuff. Yeah. So it made more sense than a fucking crooning microphone. Yeah. I never took the crooning microphone on stage. That was never a thing. That was just one photo shoot. Don't you have one tattooed onto you? Oh, God, no, I would never do that. Oh, That's, okay, all right. No, I think Aaron Berg has one of those, but uh, yeah. I, I would never I would never go so far as to be like, this is my sword, man. This is how I, <laughs> this is how I, also I love, fight for justice. I also love the headshot picture where the guy's, like, adjusting his tie. Oh, yeah, That's always, That's always my, That's my oh, favorite, yeah. too, is, like, I can do a tie-up. Like, <laughs> yeah. You never thought, well, here, wait two seconds, and I'll, then I'll adjust my tie and then take the photo. <laughs> no, get it with me doing my tie up. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> of course, there's always the tape over the microphone, uh, over the mouth of, like, ooh, oh, yeah. dangerous things. Oh, danger. Yes. Do you really? Yeah, Will Robinson. I remember me and Jack Norman did a photo shoot like 25 years ago of me not just having tape over my mouth, but with a garbage bag up to my neck on like in front of someone's house with other garbage bags. <laughs> That's very conceptual headshot. Yeah, it was fun. And then I also like you, you have your lingerie one too. Oh yeah, of course. The one where, yeah, it's hot. That one and yeah. the great gazoo one. But I actually wore that shirt on stage because I felt back then, if you have an eight by 10, that's what you should use on stage. <laughs> well, that's I, hilarious. Yeah, I think it, the, the, I never never wear a t-shirt that's, that's either trying to be funny or funnier than you. I remember yes. some guy, I remember a guy, um, I remember a guy at the Lack Resort having a t-shirt that said, I look better naked. And clearly... He didn't. You could just tell him, like, <laughs> no, you don't look better naked. That that shirt is for all, all of our benefits. But um, it was weird that that guy ended up being the husband of the girl that I lost my virginity to in, in high school, oh. which was very, oh. very weird. And I, I, I can't even barely remember how that guy made that connection or something like that. I thought you were going to say how I lost my virginity. Yeah. <laughs> in high school. <laughs> <sighs> now I wanted to. Uh, I'm sure that you guys looked up that thing about the squid billies. Did you look it up? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. for the for those who don't know, there's uh, Dolly Parton about a week ago uh, made a comment and a kind of I don't know what a press release, but talked about. So she's got Dolly World, and she has a whole bunch of different showcases and things at Dolly World. And the one thing she once had was called Dixie Showcase. And then she found out that the word Dixie is, you know, tied to a time where, you know, we can't be talking, using that word anymore. So she was like, oh, I didn't know. I don't want to offend anyone. I'll just call it Dolly Showcase. I don't want to ever offend anyone. And then she also reportedly said that she was pro Black Lives Matter and she agreed with the fight. And that's all she said. And she went on being Dolly Parton. You know, she's not really a, a, 
an edgy person, but she made her comments and that was it. Well, she said, she said, of course, it's just not our little white asses that matter, which was a great comment. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. And then this guy who's an actor and also a character on a cartoon called Squidbillies just fucking went nuts on Twitter and said a whole bunch of stuff about calling her a freak titted bitch and, you know, rednecks paid your rent for decades and blah, 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 and fuck you liberals. And of course, what happens? He gets fired from his cartoon that he's done for 15 years. And then he comes, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I, I, I took the character too far, he fucking doubles down and tells everyone to go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, he referred to everyone who got himself fired. Well, you, I mean, Darren and I talked about this already, but we, we talked about everyone who getting himself fired. He referred to them all as uh, assholes. And my question was, it's like your fans didn't get you fired. You know, the company that you work for got you fired. So you could, you know, you could hack on them, but it's like he, it, it still, it seemed like he wanted to reject all the people that might have come out to support him. Yeah. But then at no point does he have any seem any redeeming qualities about him either. I mean, he doubled down on on the freakishness of Dolly Parton, and or which I'm sort of like like seriously, of all the people you're gonna pick on is yeah. Dolly Parton. And it's not like she was like, I mean, I I don't I mean I'm pretty sure Dolly Parton knew the history of Dixie, and just she probably didn't know about how much it might offend people. But right, I right, mean, yes. I mean, do you think the Dixie Chicks should have changed their names? They did. Well, they did. I know that they did, but do you oh. think they should have? Why not? Who? I think this is the thing is like the world is changing and either you get on board and change with the world or you right. become one of those people that gets angry because it's not the way it's always been for you. So I'm just going to not change with the world and then you get left behind or you get right. fired because you refuse to grow. And that's what's happening is because oh. so much shit is happening right now where everything is changing. Things are changing for women. Things are changing for black people. Things are changing for minorities. Things are changing for white guys. Yeah. <laughs> like things are, yeah. yes. and, and it's hard. It's hard for people to be like, well, I've always felt this way and my life has always been this way. And now I'm expected to just automatically admit that everything that I believed before was wrong. And it's kind of like, I can, People are having trouble doing it, but if you're a good person, you will grow. That's all it is. Right. Well, I mean, I've always sort of said that most most of the problems that people have with political correctness is that they don't want to admit that they're getting older and the world is changing yeah. around them. Right. So That's exactly sort of like, what it is. It's yeah. like it's like yeah, you can't accept that that it's like the world's and also it's people realizing that the world's going to keep growing and changing once they're dead or or even once they sort of step out of whatever relevant spotlight that they think that they're in now. It's like, it's, and people seem to want to have the, the, the camaraderie of like having this whole sort of like the people that you sort of chum around with at a bar, but it's like, you're not speaking to just them anymore. You're speaking to but the But even, world. even in the bar, I never liked, like I never really got involved in a lot of that kind of bar talk and laughing, ha 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 that a lot of comics or even, you know, audience members after shows thought that you would be into. I was always very, like, kind of, I'm not having any of this. No, but I mean, I'm just saying, if you're in a, in a bar or in a locker room, I hate no, saying no, I know, room, I know but, that, yeah. But you, you, you feel a certain sort of, um, a, I don't know, not comfort's not the right word, but a, a certain sort of... Um, freedom, like freedom. Free, freedom to speak your mind, because you, yeah. you feel like you're around like-minded people in, in yes. this sort of bar. So it's yeah. sort of like... But I mean, you know, it's, the moment you put out shit on social media, you're talking to the world, whether you like it or not. Right. And most of the, and, and whether they're your fans or not, it's like. But this guy never seemed to even sort of, you know, he just he congratulated them and said, "Oh, you fired a fine person or a good man." Good he person, referred to himself, yeah, yeah. It was like, <laughs> like no. But well, I, mean, I think I that the, sorry. The thing is, like, the, people are being. Their past is being dug up and mistakes that they be, have made 20 years ago when it literally was acceptable to believe that and feel that way and do those things, um, even though it probably was completely unacceptable, but it was still accepted. So now people are going back and like canceling people because of things that they did 20 years ago and not looking at the person that they are now. And that's, well, that's my problem with all this cancel culture is like, yeah, people are allowed to make mistakes. And then if they learn from it and they grow from it and they change, then we need to forgive people. We need to be able to forgive people. But if it's like a habitual person that is continuously doing horrible things, then yeah, no, fuck them, cancel them. 
-hmm. but it's just like everybody is always searching like searching for something to nail someone to the cross about and it's just gotten to be ridiculous like it's just no one's gonna want to change if all they have to worry if they have to worry about people constantly trying to cancel them well, I, this, I just, yeah this, this guy didn't seem to he didn't seem to think that he did anything wrong in saying what he said he yeah. didn't feel like he needed to apologize so it's sort of like i mean that that i think is almost just as bad too as when people who don't think that they should have to apologize then all of a sudden start apologizing and it's like well you're not really you don't really believe in this apology you're right you're, you're just, just backtracking you're just yeah. trying to save your job and i get that yeah. too i mean I, I mean sarah silverman lost a gig um a little while ago for uh she was going to do the voiceover for an animated uh film and then someone dug up the sketch that she did in like 2007 where yeah. she did blackface but it's sort of like but if you watch that episode, she's clearly the the idiot in the in the show, and I mean it's just it's a good example where like context I think does make a difference. And she wasn't she wasn't approving of blackface in it. Well, so he, far Robert Downey Jr. has gotten a pass. He, well, okay. he got, yeah, he got nominated for an Oscar, but I don't think I mean, right. but I, I do think that sometimes we need to make a difference between sort of blackface and someone who's just portraying a someone who is a, a different skin color than them. I don't think... Oh, no, I, you, I, what, what I'm saying is... If your intent is to humiliate the person, then, then yeah, you're, you're doing... Yeah, he wasn't... He's not mocking. But I know, but my point mock. is, you're, you, you said, you know, sometimes we have to take context into it, and in that example, they always do bring context into it for Robert Downey Jr., but it's the one time they do do it. And other times, there's not as much... The word context isn't thrown around as much. But this one always gets a pass, and I do find that interesting. I'm well, not, I, mean, I, I don't think he's wrong doing the role, and, and other people have spoken up and, and agreed that he did the role. But I do find it interesting that when it's Sarah Silverman or someone else, they don't ever use the idea of context. They just go, no, it's wrong, cancel. I mean, in that yeah, episode, she's clearly the dummy, and then she's right. the idiot in it. But, right. you know, I don't, think, I don't think when Terry, I don't think when Justin Trudeau did a Harry Belafonte tribute, and he put eating dark into his skin. I don't consider that blackface either. I mean, I oh, but it's so funny. Uh, my favorite thing about that is how all the conservatives will come in and be like, Justin, look at him. He when he did blackface, your your hero did blackface, and it's like I would love to go through your Halloween costume history and see how many oh, times yeah. you've done blackface, oh, and see yeah. how many times you've waved a Confederate flag from the back of your pickup truck, or wore or wore an down. Aboriginal or wore an Aboriginal headdress for Halloween, and yeah, yeah. Did the, oh wow, 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 all that shit. There's tons of that. Oh, for sure. I just, I just saw, um, I was, I, I was over at my, one of my ex-girlfriends, not, well, one of my ex-girlfriends, <laughs> moved into a house. Yes. Um, and, uh, I guess, uh, her mom took a photograph of one of her old Halloween costumes and then she showed it to me and it was her dressed as Aunt Jemima and oh. it was like 1981 and I have never laughed so hard <laughs> in my entire life. I, it's like. It, I just was like crying, just bawling my eyes out laughing. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But it's 1981, and her mom dressed her up as Aunt Jemima. And I don't yeah. know, it was, and it wasn't like being, I mean, her. It wasn't mocking her. It wasn't mocking it was, it was just. It was cosplaying her. Right, yeah. You, you yes. know, you were dressing you up as this character That's on the That's the famous character, Surf. yes. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, yeah, you look at it now and you're like, oh my God, how could you do this? But, you know, 1981, it wasn't that insane. It wasn't that crazy of a no. thing to do. Well, one year for Halloween, a boyfriend and I, we were Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod from Body Break. Mm -hmm. But we didn't even, like, think of putting him in blackface. But we did We did meet another couple that was the same and one, and he had blackface. Right. Well, was it blackface or did he just like, it wasn't like he burnt charcoal and put it onto his skin. No, he just put no, like, br he put brown makeup on his yeah, face. Makeup. Right, yeah. And like, I mean, I had bronzer, but that's because Joanne McLeod bronzed it up. But right. yeah, no, we didn't even, but I mean, he did have a, like, he did have a curly black wig on, but we didn't even consider like putting black makeup on his face. Right. But there was another couple there and that was probably like 10, 15 years ago. Oh, it was post 9-11? No, it was, well, I don't remember. That makes all the remember. difference to me. <laughs> like when but I had the pruner pre microphone, that was pre-9-11. So it's oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, you got away with it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, me, to me, one of the problems with cancel culture is they always talk about how 
you know, it was so great back in the day. It was so great back in the day. It's like, okay, if it was so great back in the day, were you happy that women got like 40 cents on the dollar to be, you know, to, for working hours? Are you okay with all that other negative? They only want to see the positive that affected them. Right. That's why they love back in the day. And we've got to cancel this because we would never be like, it's just, it's just too much. Yeah. If people are afraid to live, people are afraid to live their lives. But it's, yeah, I, th I think that we just all need to, A, mind our own fucking business. Because yeah. it's getting way too much where, like, people are going on Facebook and arguing with people they don't even know. Sure. Well, but, and, like, my, but mind your own business and be a good person. That's all you really, really need. That's what everybody needs to do. Well, yeah, you're arguing with people that you that you don't even know, but also people that you don't even know are watching you argue with people that yes. you don't even know. And then they're judging you without even getting involved. That's why it's like, yes. if you get into an argument with like back and forth with someone, it's like, it's like, yeah, even if you do know who the person is, you have to remember there's a whole nother audience that is not going to contact you, is not going to contact the other person, yeah. but they're just watching two people argue with each other and they're yeah. making their own judgments about it and so just their own judgments about you. This actually, yeah, happened, exactly. this, this actually happened to me today. Uh, we were talking about the Netflix Cutie show. Do you know about Cuties? I, I just watched the trailer for it. Okay, so there's no, this show. It? It's, on, it's on Netflix. It's a story about an 11-year-old girl who wants to get into this hip-hop dancing class, and they wear, like, sexy outfits, and they do hip-hop dancing. And there's a trailer for it, and the movie was a huge success in Europe, and uh, Netflix bought the rights to it, but the marketing that, that they're doing has got these girls in this like skimpily clad outfits and the posters like really sexualization of the children. There's no doubting that what Netflix did is that. So since they put out the poster, there was a huge backlash and people are like, you know, yelling and screaming about it. Netflix took the poster down. They're now saying, we're sorry. This isn't what the show's about. We made a mistake. And so there was a thread on Richard Krause, who is Canada's almost like Roger Ebert in a way. He's a film critic. He's a very um, popular film critic and a lot of accolades. So he just brought this controversy up. And this woman was very, very upset with it. Yeah, I read the same thing, yeah. Yeah, and, and all I said was like, our, and this guy and girl were going back and forth on it. And I said, has anybody seen the movie or just the marketing? And she said, I only saw the trailer, but I'm still pissed off because I was, you know, abused as a child and I just don't like sexualization of, of children. And I said, oh, you know, I, I, I feel bad that that happened to you. And I don't like the sexualization of children either, but I'm going to wait for the movie to come out and then judge. Right. Because the problem with marketing is sometimes the people doing that has nothing to do with the filmmaker or right. anything to do. They just go, this is going to sell because it's hot right now. And boom. And now it's coming back to Netflix, huge, because it's really sexualization of children. Well, I don't know. I saw the trailer for it, and it didn't. And a, a lot of those sort of dance sequences were not in the new trailer. If they just cut, if they cut a new one, whether this is the old one or the new one, I saw it, and I didn't think it was that bad. I it's mean, there more are the poster. Have you seen the poster? Uh, it's, it's all about the poster that pissed everybody off because okay. it's these girls in very tiny push-up, you know, outfits kind of frilly and you know there's been a whole culture of Can you reenact what the poster was like i was like yeah yeah there we go yeah. <laughs> um but there's been a history you know toddlers and tiaras all these shows well i mean, they've, I mean, I mean Millen, toddlers uh, and tiaras was i don't know how that was not a pedophile's dream right but i mean that's that's a lot TikTok, of tiktok tiktok is a pedophile's dream TikTok yes. has so many children on it. Like, I even had, like, kids start following me, and then I'd go look at their stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, they're dancing to that Savage song, calling themselves Bougie Ratchet, and, like, I mean, that's, like, fine to dance, but not if you're an 8-year-old kid. Like, come on. Like, it's right. crazy. It's right. crazy. And, of course, and there's no, like, like, these kids, I can see their profile, so their profile isn't private. So right. they're, they're, right. they're, they're tw there's kids, twer there's, like, little girls twerking, yeah. I was just like, wow, this is a pedophile's dream. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's one thing. I mean, the, the woman who was arguing with Richard Krauss about the trailer and stuff, I mean, when she said that, I, I didn't read the part where she said, I was abused as a, as a kid, so this affects me in a certain way. But right. also, it's sort of like, I, I just, it also is so annoying when people really believe that, like, everything is not made just for you. Yeah. I mean, if you're someone right. to watch something and go, well, I'm offended at this, 
and it's just well then it's just not for you right. don't watch it don't support it yeah don't support it but it's sort of like even when people are fans of things and go like oh i didn't like this star wars movie well then make your own star wars movie it's just it's not everything is going to be made just for you mm -hmm. you know it's, it's a it's a big world out there but i mean but i i i saw that that trailer and i didn't think it was that terrible maybe it's a new trailer that they cut for it but but yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's everyone who just freaks out when they see the trailer for something, but they haven't seen the movie. Right. And I know, you know, I mean, they have companies that just make trailers. You know, that, that's why everyone gets pissed off when a movie trailer shows the entire movie, because they're just sort of getting the bits, best bits and pieces. Or, or they get the movie wrong. There's countless movies where you watch a trailer and you go, this doesn't look good. Then you see the movie like five years later and you're like, holy shit, this is good. Or the exact opposite, where right. it's like, this this looks really good. And then you watch a movie and it's like, this is nothing like the trailer. This is nothing like the trailer at all. And that's happened to me. Like uh, To me, I'm a big film guy, so it doesn't really matter. But I went and saw that uh, movie with Joaquin Phoenix and uh, John C. Riley, the cowboy movie. I can't remember the name of it. A couple of years the ago. Joker. The Joker. <laughs> the Joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, and the comic I was with was like pissed. They're like, this isn't Step Brothers in a Western. I go, I never thought it was. And he said, well, if you saw the trailer, that's kind of what it looked like to him. And I I'm went like, to, oh. I think, I think I might have, I think it was, that was, we went with, um, it was me, you, and, uh, oh, who's Kenny? that? Kenny. Kenny. Kenny, and uh, who's the comic? He's in LA, long curly hair, um, Canadian guy. It's Lachlan, it's Lachlan. Yeah, 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 Lachlan Patterson. And yeah, yeah we were all, we were all, it, it looked like the trailer looked like it was going to be a comedy. Right. And, and there was like, maybe there was like about three or four funny minutes in it, but mostly it was a sort of a depressing uh, Western. Yeah. Dave, like, do you remember when we went to go see Captain America with Ari and we, was that, you were there, right? Yes. And we ate an edible and we had our, our 3D glasses on and we're sitting in this movie theater and I thought it was like, I thought it was like the, the trailer that had started. And I'm like, this is the longest trailer for the new Harry Potter movie. And I can't see anything. It's all blurry. And we're, we're sitting there for like 10 minutes. And then we realized we were sitting in the Harry Potter movie for 10 <laughs> minutes with like, these glasses on high as fuck. And it was one of the funniest things ever. I'm like, I don't think this is Harry Potter. I, mean, I don't think this is Captain America. But nobody else has got glasses on. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, it was so weird. It was because I think we were late coming in or something. I don't remember why we got it all fucked up about it, but yeah, it was really funny. Well, I think it was okay. I don't think Captain America wasn't supposed to, was in just like a, was in no, like, a, yeah, the one, the movie theater that we walked into was like a 3D movie. And then. No, we were going to a 3D movie. We had 3D glasses, but Harry Potter wasn't 3D. Oh, right. So right. I thought it was just a trailer for Harry Potter because we couldn't see it. It wasn't in 3D. Right, right. right. And then I remember thinking that it was like, oh, well, maybe just the, maybe the trailers are in 3D. Or no, maybe the trailers are just in regular. Art, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah. Then we actually went in back. To, then we found the movie that we we're supposed to go to. And then I remember there was a guy, maybe about seven seats downward from me, <laughs> and he was drinking beer for the whole movie. And at one point, I leaned over. And I said, "Hey, do you mind being a little bit more quiet with your beer cans?" And then he just leaned over. He was like, "Do you mind shutting the fuck up for the rest <laughs> of the movie?" <laughs> and then I was just sort of like. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. deserved that. Yeah. I'll be okay. And that wasn't even at a rainbow cinema. Cause that's where you bring beer. I went to go see some movie with Walkinshaw and there. And we brought like road pops for that. Oh yeah. Rainbow yeah. cinema. Oh yeah. People would bring in buckets of fried chicken. Yeah. No, that's the place where it's sort of like, yeah, you, as soon as the lights go down, you hear all the cans of pop opening up yeah, and, yeah. and all the, all the submarine sandwiches and burritos <laughs> opening up and <laughs> some asshole ordered fajitas. Assist yeah, a sizzling bed. <laughs>
probably isn't the most appropriate for a park setting, but just doing his normal act. And someone in the park got very, very upset with it. And I'm not sure if they tried to shut the show down or not. Now, me personally, I've never performed in a park environment because I don't think my act, and I think everyone can make that own decision for themselves, but yeah. I don't think my act is appropriate for a park where wanderers- Public space. Like, yeah, I don't personally. That's why I've never done one. I don't think I would do one. And if I did do one, I definitely wouldn't do my normal act. But I wanted to get your opinions on it. Like, what would, how, what do you consider? Do you think the person has a right to try to not shut down a show, but at least voice their opinion about material they don't agree with in a public setting like that? Well, I mean, if it was me, I would have just left. But some people really like uh, to be heard. But right. I, I mean, I've done shows. There's this place in Edmonton called Spotlight Cabaret, and they pipe out the show into the streets and i'm like this is weird like uh, yeah. there's families walking around and i'm telling ass eating jokes like <laughs> but but i mean that's like you know i don't know but i if it was like a public park and there were, i knew that it would be just whoever that i don't know if i would do that show but if it was a backyard party and they booked a show i i would do whatever i wanted to right, right. yeah i mean yeah it's, it's sort of a weird thing if you're in a public park i mean it's but I mean, what if some guy was playing guitar and you didn't like guitar? I mean, would you go up to him and just say, hey, I don't stop playing guitar. I don't like it. You know, well, I think everybody feels like they're everybody because of social media believes that their their opinion is the most valuable opinion well, and that it's, it's better than everybody else. It's more important than anyone else's opinion. So this person obviously felt like their opinion was so much more important than everybody watching that show that they wanted to stop the show. Right. I don't know if that's what happened, but yeah. No, no, I'm just talking in generalities because I don't know either. But I know yeah. for me, I'm not doing those shows because I, I would not feel right doing my normal material in a park, even if there is 40 or 50 people that are loving it, knowing there's families around. But that's on me. That doesn't mean that has to be on you or Dave, but that's on me, and that's why I don't do them. Well, I don't think anybody sort of writes jokes and goes, I think this one would go over really well in a park. I think right. the, I think the squirrels and birds would love this one. Well, okay, along dude, with the people right. that are you know playing hacky sack. You know, you know, you know what works good in parks? Pruner mics. If you had that yeah. fucking pruner mic in a park, you'd yeah. fucking smash it. I'll pass out some seltzer water. Yeah, and I'll, I'll sing some old <laughs> Sinatra tunes. But but yeah, I, I I think I've seen the video that you're talking about. I know the comic that. But it's sort of like you know it's it's one of those things. I mean, clearly there's there was an audience there for the show. Right. Um, and it's there and it's sort of like you can, you know, you, you could go around and tell everybody, hey, there's a show starting. I don't think they do this, though. You could say, hey, there's going to be a show starting soon. There, there might be some offensive jokes. So if you're highly sensitive, maybe right. you might want to leave now. But a lot of people will stay there and be like, no, I was here first. This is my park, too. Right. But I right. mean, if it's your park and you don't like volleyball, do you tell the people, volleyball people to leave? I mean, it's. I mean, everybody's space is not going to be yours. I mean, yeah, I just think doing comedy shows in public spaces are, is not the best idea. Yeah, unless I'm, you've I'm, rented I'm, out a space or it's in a private backyard, because comedy is still very like touchy for some people. Like, it's, you know, some people think that they're being super edgy, but they're just being kind of gross. Yeah, but uh, but I think that like, yeah, don't be doing public park. I wouldn't even want to do a public park comedy show. I remember at Funny Fest. I had to go and do comedy in the streets of Calgary and I wanted to kill myself. It was the most awful thing. Well, Just standing the, in a street telling jokes. It was terrible. One of the worst gigs of all time. We used to be at the Halifax Comedy Festival and that was you had to do a comedy in a food court while people ate their food. Yeah, they're like, this would be such a good idea. No, it's so yeah. stupid. It's yeah. so I dumb. Know. Comedy yeah. is not for food courts. Comedy is not for public parks. Even in a pandemic, you can you can rent a private outdoor space. You can do it on the patio of a yes. bar. Like, yes. Don't yes. go do it in a public park unless it's going to be all material that is accessible to everybody in that park. I don't know. And I'm, I, I'm all for free speech and doing whatever show you want to do, but also like, don't be shocked if someone's going to be pissed off when you tell some jokes about, well, I don't know what the more, jokes were about. That's, that's more my angle is that if I'm going to go out, even, even in a bar where I put warnings up, I know some people are still going to be upset with my act, but I've done the right thing by saying, look, there was warnings. That's all I can do. You know, it's not my job. But when you're at a public park, if I did that act, I have to expect that some people will not enjoy it. Yeah, you can't be shocked. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and yeah, yeah, sure, I, it is your it, sorry, it is your right to do that, but it's yeah. also their right to be angry and not enjoy right. it. Right. 
I also think too, the older that you get as a comic, the less of a reward there is in offending people just for the sake of offending them. Yeah. It's just sort of like, I remember sort of like, yeah, when I first started, I mean, I was, it was one of the giddiest things that you could do. And it was so, it was fun to be as a- Walk a table. Yeah, oh, walk yeah. a yeah. table, tell them to get out, ask them Make how them much you do these scenes. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, what do you, I mean, I would never be, a, oh, what do you do for a living? I wouldn't be one of those people, but you know, it's like, uh, it, yeah, I just, um, yeah. I mean, if you want a cruise ship sort of show, and if you want to do that kind of in a park, you kind of want to please everybody, I suppose. But then at the same time, it's then tell the audience it's there. Listen, this is not going to be for everybody. So, yeah. Hey, this is Christian Potenza, and you're listening to Anything Goes with Darren Frost on Laugh Attack, XM Radio. <laughs> Watch out. Um, Watch out. And what about that that comic in, in Waterloo, Dave? Remember we wanted to touch on that? The, oh, who, uh, who went to meet no. up with the 13-year-old? Oh, yeah. I guess, Kathleen, you didn't see any of this. There was like, a, there was no. a, there was like a, a comic that got caught by one of those sort of to catch a predator style uh, people that, I mean, most, the, most, most of those cases never stick, so... That's why they took the To Catch a Predator show off the air. It was just too much in... Which I didn't even fees. know. Yeah, like, explain, fees, explain that. They, they couldn't really charge anyone because technically they didn't do anything. They kind of got right to the to, right to the edge, but... But never did it. But never did anything. So you can't really charge anyone with something. But but that's that's a, a funny thing, too. It's sort of like anyone... If, if you take improv or sketch or stand-up, you're immediately labeled as a comedian... Like, uh, by, no matter what level you're at, you could have right, just done yeah. it once, and the comedian right. gets caught. Yeah, I mean, this guy was just an amateur open mic comic, but somehow they found out he was an amateur open mic comic, and then they just said he's. They didn't even say up and coming comedian. Like they said, he's a comedian, and you know, there's there a lot of different examples you could probably have of like, you know, it's. Yeah, I don't think he's he's not losing anything. It's it's not. I don't think he had a career to lose to begin with, but right, right. But it but was one of those weird, moments that I was just weird. like, thank God I'm attracted to women that are age appropriate for me. Like the whole, because <laughs> apparently they caught him with a whole sort of like, uh, I guess he said to the 13, uh, the, what he thought was a 13 year old girl, I guess he said was like, yo, I don't care that you're 13. You know, do you care that I'm 30? Oh. And then I guess he sent dick pics and pictures of condoms. Um, ah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's a difference because there are some 13 year olds that look 30 nowadays. Like there are some young girls that look very old, and like I've even had conversations, like talk to guys, and they've said, you know, like I sometimes you'll see a girl online, and you'll know, you'll think that they're 22 or 23, and they're sure. set 16 or something. But like if that happens, and and you find out, then you're like, well, this is inappropriate. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. But this guy's like, oh, you're 13. It's okay with me, but it's okay with you. That's gross. Right. That's right. Pedoph that's pedophilia. <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, I mean, yeah. He and he clearly knows that he's doing something wrong when he has to ask, is it okay that I'm this? Yeah. You know, and it's just one of those like, oh man, you like, mean, what does he think he's going to be like? Oh no, she said it was okay. <laughs> Well, it's, it's that classic, totally cool with it. it's that classic cool. argument. If we knew in the 50s, 60s, and 70s what a lot of our musical heroes did, they'd be fucking done. Yeah. They'd be done. Led, well, Zeppelin, the same, Led Zeppelin would be done. Well, it's the no. same thing when people are all up in arms about Louis C.K. jerking off in front of women and whipping his dick out. I'm like, I could ruin a couple heroes for people uh, yes. who whip their dicks out in front of me. Right. <laughs> like, Or I've heard stories from other female comics. So... Right. I don't know. It's like, you know, let's, uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was really awkward. The one, I mean, it's, you can watch it on a video of them catching him too. And it, you oh, just yeah. sort of like, oh man, you really, but it's funny how much the people stay and talk to the people that, that, that have caught them. Cause there's no real. Well, that's the thing. Like I, when I went back to see that video and then I looked up on Facebook when he still had a Facebook profile, there was like 80 mutual friends. I mean, I wasn't his friend, but 80 people were mutual friends with this dude. I'm like, this has been up for a couple of days now, you know, it's been talked about and it's pretty shocking, but. But I, I, 
I mean, I also, I don't know how, I probably know 10% of the people on my Facebook that I could, mm. I actually know, you know, like I, there's, there could be people on my Facebook that I don't even know. And then I'm friends with them. And I'm like, well, I'm not really friends with them. I just added them. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I mean, there's still, there's still people friends with that guy that, uh, uh, spray painted the war memorial around yes. December. Oh, and they're always like, well, I'm just watching him to see what he does. I'm like, eh, well, okay. Yeah. Then you're egging him on. Then he has an audience. Got an audience. You're not, 100%. yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not being a hero by watching him to make sure right. he's not doing bad stuff. Right. You're I'm, giving I'm, him an audience. I'm, I'm, and, and I get it. People are sort of like, oh, well, he suffers from mental illness. Well, I mean, mental illness might not might be the excuse that he's using, but that doesn't make it OK. I no. mean, you can still be a mentally no. ill person and be a shithead and you should be called yes. out for it. Yes. And you That's not going to yeah. be the blanket statement of like, oh, I'm mentally ill. I can do anything I want. It's like, yeah, no, 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 you're still a piece of garbage. And uh, and and great. You're a piece of garbage that's mentally ill. Big deal. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, guys, we're at the hour mark. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to talk about, Dave? Uh, no, I, I mean, I went to the uh, I, I went to the, the the movies a few days ago. It was three dollars at the Beaches Cinema. Wow! And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there was like there was a like there's a an empty row of people. There's an empty row between each row, and there's like there's two chairs, and then there's two empty chairs, and everybody reserves their ticket and. I, I don't know. I think people gotta not live in fear so much anymore, and need to go out and and start doing shit. I went to the water park in Edmonton, and it was great because it was like no lineups for the water slides. They only allow a certain amount of people in. Yep. There's two blocks. You can either come in the in the morning or in the afternoon. You're there for four hours, which is tons of time. Yeah. The cabanas are half price. Like it, I love it. It's great. And they're cleaning everything constantly. There's people like as soon as somebody gets up from somewhere, they go and clean it. There's somebody so constantly walking around cleaning all of the hand railings everywhere. Right. Yeah. So you're only swimming in fresh piss. Not yeah, fresh piss. Been there for a few hours. <laughs> exactly. We can go back to worrying about all the shit that we normally worried about in, in water parks. Yeah. So that's 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 mm, a relief. Fresh piss. Let's end. It was the cleanest. It was the cleanest I'd ever seen it. 